Welcome back, everybody. This is part three of my reboot of the legendary Confederate campaign in Ultimate General Civil War, and we are at the first battle of Winchester, and in keeping with my new strategy of going for maximum damage caused to the enemy while also winning the battles, I have chosen to forego my usual strategy at Winchester, which is basically to lose very few men by doing a complete uh, flanking maneuver and coming up and hitting the enemy from the rear. Uh, the numbers are fairly even. We, uh, he's got about a thousand more men, well, about a thousand fewer men than me, but he's got 34 guns and I didn't bring any because I knew I'd be moving fast. Uh, I'm just going for direct frontal assault and I'm just going to try to uh, overload on one side if I can so I can cause the most casualties possible. So I, I've advanced kind of with a full battle line here, but I'm going to shift that now. Uh, now that I'm getting close and I'm going to start shifting these units over and come in at the city. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'll come from this way and come in at the city through the woods, which is I know where he's going to be. Uh, but I'll try to catch him in the open over here. So we'll see how that goes. So I went in to start making my move into the woods and he charged right out of the woods at me with one of these big uh, 3,000 man brigades that he has. He's also got these really pesky... Uh, cavalrymen that are riding around in my rear that I've got to be constantly careful of. But there's really nothing in my rear that I need to protect except my flanks. I do have to worry about this artillery a little bit that's kind of annoying me. But really it's just kind of a matter of pushing through as much as I can. So he's being super aggressive, which uh, honestly is, is actually fine with me because that hopefully allows me better opportunities to inflict casualties on him, even if it means more casualties for me. So I'm just going to keep pressing things here. And now that I've gotten Gordon out in the open, hopefully I can get on his flank a little bit and cause some more casualties. But uh, right now, this strategy is certainly causing more casualties than the other one that I normally would employ. And so far I've lost about 1,300 men. He's lost about 1,600. But hopefully now that I've gotten to the place where I've pushed him out of these woods, that should lean more in my favor. Alright, just about a half hour to go. Things are definitely pretty much going the way I want them to at this point. I've been able to give myself an advantage in every situation, even though the numbers are fairly even. Um, I find myself pretty well in every situation outnumbering him, outgunning him, mostly because he's got this entire brigade up here that has occupied itself with my skirmishers. Uh, so I've basically got about 400 men occupying a brigade of... Mm -hmm. Almost 3,000. i got to get Preston skirmishers out of here because they're about to be wiped out. And now he's rushing some troops down here to help out. Oh. And we'll just have to kind of keep, keep going with the uh, strategy that I've been employing. It seems to be working pretty well. Uh, numbers now. Yeah, I've taken out over 3,000 of his men, lost 2,000 of mine. All right, so with two minutes to go on this one. Again, I could have done this battle uh, and taken far fewer casualties, but I went the route of trying to inflict maximum damage on his army. And uh, I think I'm at a place where I can go ahead and just call this one a day. I don't really want to press this one. The odds are too even uh, in terms of the numbers for me to really want to do that. So 2,800 loss for me, 4,000 for him, plus 400 cavalry. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not ideal and like I said um, not the way I normally do that and maybe the the thing for me to do moving forward is to kind of pick and choose as someone suggested there are some battles you want to press it 
and you want to just wipe him out because you get the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. Other battles, maybe I just do the route. Maybe there's a happy medium between pre- preserving my army, but also finding opportunities to inflict maximum damage on him. So this is where things stand now as we have two more battles to go into, Cross Keys and Port Republic. Um, one of these I remember being one that you can inflict a lot of damage on. The other one, this is the one here that tends to be kind of rough because you get outnumbered and uh, he, he has a decent force. So this is one where I'm just going to kind of hold back and play defense and try to inflict casualties on him. But we'll come back with that one next. All right, so we're well into the Battle of Cross Keys, and it seems to be going pretty well so far. Um, just really have to hold the two objectives. And I tried a different strategy this time. Rather than building a whole big bat- long battle line right here and leaving a few down here, I still left a few down here. And what I did was I left a couple of these skirmishers back here thinking that maybe at some point he might try to get around me and I'd surprise him, but that didn't happen. However, he did try to march two brigades down right here, and I surprised them because he didn't know I had anybody sitting here in the woods. Uh, so he's he's tried a couple of times to charge into my lines here without a lot of success. Haas is taking the brunt of things right now. Uh, 400 deaths, 500 kills, but overall, it's going really, really well. I'm outnumbered by about 8,000 men. Actually, he outnumbered, outnumbered me by 9,000 to start. Uh, but I've taken out 2,700 of his men, and I've only lost about 1,000 in the process. So even being outnumbered, it's gone really well for me so far. Uh, I really just kind of have to hold strong here. These skirmishers are doing pretty well. They're going toe-to-toe with an entire brigade and keeping him busy. While McGowan just basically gets free hits on him. He's got 220 kills and zero deaths. Uh, so his skirmishers are really, really been beneficial to have there. Uh, so, again, lots of casualties, but I'm inflicting far more, and I'm holding the objective. That's really all I can ask for. So I'm doing a little swap here. I'm going to move Paige up to the front because Haas is taking a lot of casualties, and I don't want him to to weaken and end up breaking. Of course, that's, that's causing Siegfried to kind of shift a little bit here, so I need to readjust him. But uh, all in all, really happy with how things are going. I need to drop Siegfried back a little bit and get him kind of resituated. Uh, he did try to bring up a, a unit here and I got some skirmishers up on his flank and drove them off. So things are still going really, really well. Uh, th- these skirmishers, I'm just really impressed with how well they're doing at the moment. They've allowed for me to basically get about 600 kills to 90 deaths on this one brigade. And uh, right now, with an hour and a half to go, I've closed his 9,000-man advantage all the way down to about uh, 6,400 men, and it's closing still. So I, this may be one of those battles where I'm able to push at some point and really kind of throw him back, especially if he's going to keep making frontal assaults like this right into the heart of my artillery. Man, he is going for... Bloodbath City in every one of these battles now, man. Uh, he's made a series of frontal assaults and a lot of casualties happening because of it. Uh, but again, I am inflicting way more than I'm losing. Let's look at the numbers here. Uh, it is now up to... He has lost 6,000 men and I've lost about 2,700. And as long as I can keep these two to one odds going even when I'm heavily outnumbered that'll bode well for me for some of these later battles where I can really inflict some serious casualties I just want to keep his number low as best I can all right so I drove off the two brigades that were attacking me on the south and there's another one coming up now Uh, so now I'm gonna try to get up on him a little bit but I have to be careful because Number one, there's a brigade coming here, but there's also this artillery out here that could be hitting my flank. But if I can get into the cover of these woods, I think I'll be okay. As soon as I drive off Gordon, I'll have to think about maybe another flank attack. Oh, here he comes. Okay. So he's not really going to give me the chance. He keeps charging at me, which is fine because it exhausts his men and makes it easier for me to drive them off. So I would guess, I mean, he's already at 
almost 8,000 casualties. We'll probably put push his number over 10,000 by the time this is all said and done, which is way, way, way more than historically was in this battle. And just as things are about to end, he's making one last desperate charge across the water, and I'll inflict some more casualties. And he's going to start moving in on the objectives, but that one triggers automatically. There's no way I can extend it at all. But there you have it, 10,000 casualties inflicted at Cross Keys, 4,500 losses for myself, which is not bad considering I was outnumbered by a healthy margin. Um, and it looks like we started to grab some nice 1855s. Those will be nice to use. I did lose a wounded Brigadier General, and Alfred Kemper was killed, who I believe was one of my original brigade commanders going back to the Potomac Fort. So just kind of looking here now, uh, I used Albert Johnson that time. I've got my first two two-star units. Now my plan here with those is that uh, I'm going to keep their numbers low so that they're not as expensive to replace, maybe around 1,500 men in a, in a two-star unit, uh, unless uh, situation allows me to put more in it than that. And I'll otherwise focus on br bringing new units. One of the great things this time around that completely is different than last time is that so far, I haven't had to use any uh, of the farmer rifles. I've got 1842s, uh, Lawrence, Mississippi rifles, uh, more 1842s, 1841, Springfields, uh, all decent weapons. I haven't had to go into any of those farmers' uh, weapons so far. Now, that may change at some point as my army grows, but so far that has not been the case. So we'll get refit, and we'll head back into Port Republic and see how things stand. All right, so next we dive into Port Republic, and uh, once again, going to be about even odds. He's got a few more guns than I do. Um, I've certainly got the advantage in terms of manpower just barely. Uh, and of course, this is one of those tricky ones that I uh, kind of play the game a little bit with uh, by preparing for his troops that will be coming in up here so that I can annihilate them before they can even get into position to really do much of anything. Uh, so I'm going to plan to do the same thing, and then we'll kind of see how it goes from there. Okay, so with exactly two hours to go, we've just now gotten all of the troops onto the field and into position. Now, the majority of his force hasn't entered the battlefield yet, so right now I've got kind of this nice advantage. And part of me wonders if whether, uh, whether the, the way to go might not have been to try to crush this force first and then turn around and deal with the other enemy once he enters the battlefield. Uh, that's certainly an option that could be available to me, but I've set up the majority of my force to deal with the incoming troops, but I've got some skirmishers as well as a couple of brigades here to cover that side of things, and that should be enough because uh, he's only got about 7,000 men over here. So I'm trying this a little different. Uh, I just killed General Fremont. Uh, he was the first Republican nominee for president in 1856, uh, and he is now dead. Killed at the Battle of Port Republic. So instead of bunching right up here and getting into close fire for his cannon uh, and losing a lot of men that way, I've decided to kind of hold back and just let him fall into my killing zone uh, in a little more open way. So we'll see how that works out. At some point, though, with only an hour and a half to go, I'm going to have to turn around and go take the objective. Alright, so once again, the AI is deciding the route of bonsai charges into the middle of everything. I've got to be cautious, though, because he kept another brigade back here, so I can't come up and and get too close and I've got this problem of everybody being flanked at the moment so I can't offer too much support at least for the time being and it's also distracting from my guns because they're facing the other way and dealing with them So just very early on in this stage of things, he's lost about 800 men. I've lost about 800, so it's, it's fairly even. 
obviously the goal is to make that change and we're gonna start that right here start getting to his flank once I route these troops my job gets a whole lot easier Of course, most of the casualties right now for me are happening over here. There we go. Drive Tyler off and then I can back these guys up. Got to be careful. I don't want to get too close to his troops up here his guns all right so now the duck shoot begins uh, I actually think I can probably pull Stuart off of the line here now and turn around and and start making the push through here there's only only about five a little over five thousand men left over here so I can actually safely outnumber him at this point And we'll finish these guys off in short order. Just looking one more time at the numbers. Uh, he's down to about 9,900 men. So he's lost 3,000. I've lost almost 2,000. But that's about as good as it's going to get for him. The numbers are going to shift heavily in my favor in the next 45 minutes. Now with 25 minutes to go, all of his guns have disappeared. I've wiped out all those units. I have lost a couple of leaders, though. Um, so that's going to hurt me going into the big battle coming up. But these two units are going to be wiped off the face of the earth. And now I basically have four brigades over here to push through and take the objective in the next 20 minutes. Uh, Stuart's going to get routed. But the same thing's going to happen to Tyler here very shortly. I'm actually going to go ahead, I think, and I'm going to have to keep three brigades there. That should be enough to get the job done. I'm honestly surprised Tyler hasn't broken yet. I've got skirmishers firing into his back. But this all should resolve itself fairly shortly. I may just have to push things along for the sake of time by bringing Preston down. So this is one of those fun battles where I'm going to move on to the objective after time has already completed. And there we have it. So there again, we got about 3,500 casualties for me, 6,100 for him. I may, I may do better than that. I may try that one more time. Um, if I do, I'll show you that video instead of this one. If I don't, then uh, we'll just move on. All right, so here we go into Port Republic, uh, last part of Jackson's Valley campaign before we get over and join the seven days fight around Richmond. I'm going to have just a slight advantage in men, but uh, disadvantage in guns. And I'm going to try a strategy I've never tried before in this battle. Typically, my strategy has always been to uh, basically load up over here, destroy the reinforcements that come, and then turn and deal with the rest. I'm going to do it the opposite way this time because there's at least maybe a half hour to 45 minute window where I've basically got almost a 3 to 1 advantage on the battlefield because he's only going to have, I think, two brigades plus a couple of batteries down here right now. Uh, so if I concentrate all my forces down here, take the objective, and break those guys... Uh, then maybe line up right here and catch him as he's crossing the river. I may actually do better. So we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. All right, so my reinforcements have entered the battlefield with 220 to go. And here he comes, charging at me. A rather interesting strategy considering he's about to run into the rest of my army. So I've got a little bit better than a 2-1 to one advantage that I'll need to take advantage of here as quick as possible. So we're going to have to press this. And, and just
just try to do the best I can to destroy these two brigades before the reinforcements arrive on the battlefield. So I'm just going to press everybody ahead and see how this works out. Because I think these are the only two brigades of infantry he's got right now. Oh, and I also switched over um, my artillery to 10-pounder parrots that I had sitting around. Uh, rather than the 6-pounders that were in that unit before. No, the 12-pounders, I should say. So let's press, press, press this, because I don't think I have much time. As soon as I can turn one of these brigades, I can get on the other one's flank. No, McGowan, don't go in. And then I'm going to break off some skirmishers here. Let's see if I can get down there and deal with that battery. So the skirmishers are dealing with that battery. I'm trying to get on his flank as quickly as I can here. Of course, Carol's going to make this difficult because he's decided to go right after Penrose because he's got these big advantages in numbers that allow him to do that and I just exposed my flank for the sake of getting over there to help him this may not be a bad thing because I'm actually driving Carol toward where the reinforcements are going to come from which makes my job a little bit easier by putting them all in one place but fairly soon those reinforcements are going to arrive but I'll have the objective well in hand by then here they come So Hatch is going to have to hang right there, if he can. I'll send Penrose to deal with these guys. And I'll have to start building my other flank now. So hour and 20 to go. Uh, the hill's contested for another 43 minutes. I've driven Tyler all the way back to the corner of the map. I'm still trying to finish off this battery here. They're just about toast. Just need to hit them a couple more times. And so I'll hold Paige down here just to keep Tyler in check. Once I clear these skirmishers out, I can turn more units up to defend against this second attack that's coming. I'm going to back Stuart up. I had the 10 pounders doing counter battery fire, but I'm going to switch them to firing on this infantry as it starts to cross. He's actually backing up, which is interesting. So I should be in good shape now. I just have to hold where I am. Alright, about 15 minutes till the hill is no longer contested. I'm doing a little, uh, game of tag here with this group of supplies. I've got two units of skirmishers with orders not to fire. Trying to ensnare them while I simultaneously try to check his movements across this bridge up here. I'm going to have to move across with these two units to cover my flank so I can get up and, and deal with this guy a little more effectively. But otherwise not a lot happening. Um, Tyler was starting to make a move over here, but I, I countered that, fired a couple times, and he broke. Supplies are running out of places to go. So we'll see what happens when the contested timer runs out, if it lets me keep going with this one. Contested timer ran out, but it's going to let me take this one all the way to the end, but I do not think it'll let me take it further than that. This is one of those battles that, um, as soon as the clock ticks down, it's over. So I'm going to try to uh, gang up on a couple of these brigades, inflict some more casualties. Right now it's about, uh, he's lost 3,000, I've lost about 2,000. So it's not as one-sided as I would like it to be, but I will certainly take it.
Milroy just tried to get sneaky with a unit that had broken, but I'm not buying it. I may not have time to get Stuart over to help out here. But these two units have both lost a lot more than they've taken than they've inflicted. All right, we'll take this to the finish, see what happens. So it is going to let me keep going for a little while, and I feel like even though the casualties have been fairly even to this point, um, we're looking at 4,000 for him and 2,600 for me. I feel like it'll only go more in my favor if I let this go for a little while, because I'll start to wipe out some of these units. I get mine re replenished with supplies, which is something he can't do at the moment. So I'm going to let this one play out a little bit, and we'll see what the final totals look like. I've just about annihilated his army. Uh, obviously, it's costing me far more in casualties, but uh, he's down to just 4,500 men. I just captured what was left of a brigade up here of 1,000 men. And I'm slowly but surely just tearing the rest of him apart. But I think I'm going to call it a day there because it's already been a really, really good day for me. 7,000 casualties for him. Uh, 3,300 for me. Which... Uh, goes along with a thousand that I captured. Uh, grab some ten pounders, grab some supplies, and uh, rescue a few guns, but nothing really to write home about. But I do have enough Harper's Ferry 1855s to outfit a regiment now, which is nice. So let's kind of take a look at things where they stand now. I don't think I want to go army organization. I think I'll go with that uh, two points after Gaines Mill because we go right into Malvern Hill. So it's back-to-back -back, um, kind of big battles to fight here. So he's at sixty to 65,000, which is significantly less than he was last time. But I'll have to get my army refit, come back, and we'll see exactly how things look this time going into Gaines Mill compared to last time. All right, so here we go. We're looking at Gaines Mill now. And the... Uh, Numbers are basically the same as when I did this before on my Legendary campaign, even though he's got far fewer men in his force pool. For this battle itself, it's about the same. I'm sitting right around 30,000 men. He's sitting right around 25 with 86 guns. So it's, it's really not much different than before. The difference, the only real difference for me is that I'm much better equipped than I was last time. I think I've only got maybe two brigades that are using uh, Reboard Farmer muskets. They're, all the rest have, have much better weapons. Now, uh, when I did this before in this legendary campaign, uh, I did it once by doing kind of a traditional attack. I, I did it a second time with an alternate strategy where I came all the way around his left and attacked right here, and that worked out pretty well. Uh, so I thought I'd do it the one way I haven't yet, which is to go all the way over to this side and have the, the whole attack come from his right. Uh, so I'm going to start by bringing, I have all my artillery uh, that's coming in the first core. Uh, so I don't have it all yet, but I will. And I'm going to get all my artillery set up and try to do some counter battery fire as I see his artillery, try to take some of them out. Um, and then eventually I'll have that second wing of my army, my second core, which has a lot of cavalry in it. Um, they're going to come down and it's only when I get that that I will make the final attack so not a lot is going to happen here early on in this battle alright so we're in the second phase of the battle now and for the first time I'm actually making some contact with the enemy uh, and in this case I'm still shifting my units over uh, I've been just kind of doing this kind of leapfrogging getting my units further and further over and this part of the battlefield just opened up I got reinforcements and all it was was another battery um, so we're getting these guys into position. We're doing a little counter, counter battery fire here. Hopefully we can start taking out his artillery. That's what I really want to focus on. Especially with these 10 pounders. I don't know what, these are Napoleons, so yeah, we'll keep them firing on his troops. Especially these skirmishers. Alright, and here come some of my reinforcements now from this side so now that they're in position I'll be ready to start launching my attack uh, both sides have about 20,000 men so I've got more that'll be coming but this is really who I want to make my attack with and uh, for the first time I've got a significant amount of both cavalry and also 
mounted infantry available to me that I'll be making use of to hopefully gobble up some of his units, especially he's got a lot of skirmishers in this one. Uh, so I'll, I'll take advantage of that however I can. All right, so it looks like I caught some skirmishers out in the open over here. So we're going to deal with them, use my melee cavalry, wipe them out real quick. Hopefully we catch up to them, wipe them out before Farnsworth decides to get involved, which he may do, but I still have them outnumbered. So I'll bring my mounted infantry over here just in case. All right, they're getting away. I'm going to have to pull back. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Not really, but now we'll go ahead and start pushing forward with my main advance. And like I said, he's got this artillery that I've got to kind of drive off, and I can't even see it still, so I'm not really able to do any counter battery fire. There they are. So we'll keep advancing and we'll see how this goes. Alright, and just like that, I believe I'm on to the final phase now. And all I need to do to take uh, to win this battle is to take these two objectives right here. And obviously this one over here on my right is going to be a little bit more challenging than the one on the left. But I've got the numbers. These skirmishers are really annoying, but they're in the woods, which make it a bit of a challenge for me to deal with with my cavalry. But I think this one's going to go relatively easy. It's just going to be a matter of kind of the final tally on the casualties. All right, so with about an hour to go here, I just got my last batch of reinforcements, and they're going to start coming down. Not really enough time for them to affect the battle in any meaningful way. I'm not entirely sure why this guy's shifting like this, but we'll deal with it. And I'm sending... Oh, we're going to deal with these skirmishers. I'm going to send these guys over because I see some supplies roaming around over here. And I'm wondering if there might not be at least a, an opportunity to explore trying to take those supplies. But I'm going to easily take the last objective right here. So that's really not a concern. I'm just trying to maximize the casualties that I inflict at this point. Which, as we can see right now, he's lost about 3,000 men. I've lost about 2,000, so... A relatively bloodless battle thus far. I'm going to hit this battery first before I go hit and flanking fire here. And I'm not going to push too far outside of this because then I get downhill and there's just not a lot to be gained by that. We'll just try to deal with these supplies if I can. Well, he's not going to let me get the supplies. He's protecting them well with this thousand man unit of... Uh, mounted infantry and he's hitting me hard on this objective over here Haas has had a rough day it's one of my two star units I probably should not have had him at the front in fact I'm gonna go ahead and drop him back the first chance I get and I've got reinforcements coming down I'm gonna let Haas get a, a volley off first before I drop him out So again, I find myself torn, thinking that I want to prolong this if I can, because I just feel like I'm, I'm just now starting to really gain an edge. I want to try and inflict some casualties, because I know Malvern Hill is a brutal battle, because he's just got so much artillery, and I'm thinking, if there's anything I can do at all to try and lessen the pain of that battle, I ought to go for it. 
We're going to charge and see if I can destroy this battery. Although these guys aren't melee cavalry. I should still be able to, uh, to do some damage here. So this is going to pretty well wrap it up. I've got what I need for a victory well in hand. Hopefully I can draw this out at least long enough to try and destroy this battery. And maybe a little bit longer still. No, nah, it's going to end that one right off the bat. So uh, here we have kind of the, the final numbers. 5,200 casualties for him, 3,200 for me. Um, not a whole lot by way of grabbing things. Again, I did lose another colonel, but I gained a brigadier general uh, and, and lost another brigadier general uh, to a wound. So... Now what we want to do is just kind of do what I've been doing with these videos, which is to go ahead and compare where I stand this time compared to where I stood last time at this point. Looks like I'll be able to take about 40,000 men into Malvern Hill. I have a feeling he's going to have more than that. Uh, he's at 33,000 right now, but I would expect there's going to be some scaling involved. So I'm going to pause for just a second, go ahead and pull up the information. Uh, and get a comparison here compared to where he was last time. All right, so here are the figures. First of all, casualties were way, way down in that battle. When I played it last time, it was ninth. It was about eight thousand on my side, and uh, between nine and ten thousand on his side. So it was way down on both sides. But still, his total army number is still sitting at right around twenty-five thousand fewer this time around. He's at seventy-two to seventy-seven thousand. Uh, he had ninety-seven to one hundred and two last time. So I don't expect that's going to affect Malvern Hill at all because Malvern Hill has fewer men than that anyway. I think the first place we're really going to see a big difference with that battle is when we get to Antietam and then especially to Fredericksburg, which are both coming up here pretty soon. Uh, of course, we'll have to get through uh, Bull Run first. But we'll take a look. Uh, we'll see how that all goes. Armory last time was 39 to 44, so that's actually almost evened out um he's only slightly ahead of that and training's almost identical as well so overall numbers look very good for me so we'll come back next episode and and we'll kind of talk about what malvern hill looks like um since that's going to kind of be a video unto itself since there's not really any uh videos before that we'll see i mean depending on how long it takes i might go right into the next one but for now i'm going to wrap it up right there uh, but as you can see, things are going along nicely. I'm definitely continuing to be in a much better position than I was before. And I think long term, it's only going to exponentially improve in my favor. But we'll see. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along with this little reboot series that I'm doing. Everybody seems to be enjoying it. And I really appreciate all the positive feedback that I've heard from it, as well as all the great uh, suggestions and uh, tips. Uh, I've learned a lot from all of you. Please keep those things coming. And we will see you again real soon.